Hey there, my Battlefoot friends and fans! Welcome back to Battlefoot Hardline. It's time to try a new weapon, and this time I'll try the 1887 shotgun. And the reason for that is not just because I was eager to try a new gun, it's actually because I got shot by this gun so many times. I I just didn't have a chance to even pull my trigger. This gun is so fast. So I was curious to try it out myself and see if I can get some payback on all those suckers who constantly kill me with the 1887. And look at that. This gun is super, super fast. But you really have to get used to that reload. It's a pump action and it's kind of reloading quite fast fast for a shotgun you don't have to kind of do it yourself it kind of automatically reloads but that little time that it takes to reload it can often get you killed as I learned very fast so where does this uh, 1887 name really come from does this gun really exist in real life I actually looked it up because I was curious and yes this gun actually did exist or maybe still exists with some gun collectors but it actually was designed in 1887 believe it or not in the 19th century they actually made a second one in the 20th century this one was called 1901 it's kind of funny you know that they just kind of give it the name of the year it was designed i don't think they kind of do that anymore nowadays or maybe they do i don't know like i always have to say i don't know much about guns and i don't really need to know much about guns but this is a historic gun so i was kind of curious to just kind of read up but you know it doesn't hurt knowing things and this was actually the very first truly successful repeating shotgun. Shotgun shells at the time used black powder as a propellant and so the model 1887 shotgun was designed and chambered for less powerful black powder shot shells. And they soon realized that the 1887 was not strong enough to handle early smokeless powder shot shells and so they resigned it later to become the 1901 model. Over the years, a number of gun companies actually tried to produce the 1887 and 1901 shotguns that could chamber modern smokeless shotgun shells, largely for the cowboy action shooting discipline, but with little commercial success. Recently, however, three firearm companies have successfully produced viable models for the commercial firearms market. So enough about history and statistics and so forth. I'm not usually a big a uh, fan of filling my videos with stats and stuff because after all this is a video game and this is about fun and who knows if this shotgun really even feels like the real shotgun felt back then in the 19th century we don't know all i know is that i highly recommend this shotgun if you're just a fan of shotguns and aren't shotguns fun in games anyway because i a lot of times also use it in counter-strike and i sometimes do better with shotguns than any other gun because they're just so fast nobody can react I mean unless they have a shotgun themselves and they surprise you if you see them first they're dead and in those situations it's almost always a guaranteed kill unless your aim is off and then you have to wait for the reload to happen before you can take another shot but even though the reload happens fairly quickly you are completely defenseless in that time and it can make the difference between you surviving or getting killed. When this happens, you often have another chance as long as you make yourself a hard target to hit by moving and strafing from left to right. This will quote unquote buy you time until you can take a second shot and take out the target successfully, of course, with high satisfaction. But how does this gun feel overall? As you look at this, you can see that I cannot take out this target with the first shot, even though I'm right on point, because I was a little bit too far away. And to me, that feels so satisfying because it feels realistic. A shotgun should not be able to take out enemies from a really far distance from miles away, like in some of the shooter games where you get so annoyed because you feel it's so unfair because with a shotgun you always have the advantage of this first surprise where nobody can react or almost nobody can react fast enough to take you out you will always get the shot if you're on point so yes this gun feels 
amazing. I, I just had so much fun with it. I just couldn't get enough and I wanted to just play one more game and one more game and one more game and I actually have seen people successfully run around with this on wide open maps believe it or not. I would never dare to do that because you know it's, there's so many snipers and stuff around. I don't know how they manage to basically sneak around the enemy and take them out because you have to be so close. But in maps like this, obviously, and as you know, if you've watched my, you know, introduction to this DLC, uh, it's not my favorite map because I have such a hard time to see in this map, you know, unless right here there's a ton of light. So I stick to this like area for a little while because I love how much you can see here. But in the dark areas, I barely see anything. I usually don't see the enemy until they're in front of me. And that's perfect actually with the shotgun. That's another reason I thought, hey, I'm gonna go try the shotgun out. Because so many times I did I was unaware that somebody was right in front of me and I got killed with a shotgun and I didn't even have time to react because it was a shotgun. If so many other times when it was like some other gun, I still had time if I managed to get a headshot and the other guy didn't. But with a shotgun you just, you know, especially if the person is good at aiming, you, you can forget about winning that gunfight. And when I played this match, I was stuck again with a team that did not know how to play the objective. Unfortunately, so many times, people are more concerned about their death kill ratio than about helping their team and winning. And that's, that really goes with like every game that has objectives. It's just too bad because people who really try to play the objectives get killed a lot because they don't have any support from their team and that can get really frustrating. People should just understand that if they pick an objective-based match that they need to play the objective. Otherwise, they should just go and play deathmatch where they can lone wolf to their heart's desire. So this is the end of the match. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye.